But like so many policy changes, it's the unexpected outcomes that need to be watched. And one of those outcomes has been a significant shift in the accountability of members. Obviously, list members are very much accountable to their political parties as they owe their place on the list to their party. But the pervasive power of the party vote has meant that all members are now totally accountable to their parties. This House, in so many ways, has become a place of political parties rather than a House of Representatives. Now, I'm not for one moment trying to make a case for the old system, but I do believe there will come a time when we'll need to re-examine that balance of accountabilities. Representation is enhanced when members have to help ordinary people in their local communities, many of whom may never have voted for them. My colleagues, with that off my mind, let me say goodbye. My sincere thanks to the myriads of people who have helped me so much over the past three decades. I've had the privilege of working with some wonderful colleagues. To former Prime Minister Jim Bolger, my sincere thanks for backing me in such bold education reforms. Likewise to Dame Jenny Shipley, the free reign given me as Trade Minister enabled me to pursue initiatives Trade Ministers from most other countries couldn't even dream of. And to Mary Harris, the clerk of our house, it's just been a privilege working with you. I also want to acknowledge the outstanding officials I worked with, particularly in education, the Treasury and MFAT, people whose commitment to providing sound advice and helping shape ideas into realities have been a special part of my time here. And to those so often forgotten, Manfred, the chef and his team at Bellamy's, the messengers, security, building and chamber and gallery staff, thank you, I say thank you to you all. Hundreds of people helped me first over my 12 years as the member for Kaipara and since 1996, likewise, in Rodney. There are far too many to name, but let me just acknowledge my first electorate chairman in Kaipara, Ron McCallum, and in Rodney, long-serving loyal chair, June Levitt. I also want to acknowledge longtime friend John Evans, who managed at least six election campaigns for me. Things would have been so much more difficult without loyal supporters like Richard and Patience Izard, who I lost to Louise Upston, and faithful electorate agents like the inimitable Maggie Beaumont, who I finally lost to Nikki Kay. To the self-appointed chair of my so-called fan club, Wendy Hawkins, my sincere thanks. But standing head and shoulders above them all, despite her shortish stature, is Beryl Bright. I stole Beryl from Merv Wellington almost 27 years ago. I'm not sure he ever forgave me. <laughs> she was my EA in the early years, my SPS in my nine years as a minister, loyally stayed with me despite losing almost half a salary when I was back in opposition, and has continued to look after me in my time as speaker. Perhaps most special of all, though, Beryl helped shape the lives of so many young people who worked with me as a minister. Young people like Simon Tucker, newly appointed High Commissioner-designate to Canada, Ben King, now Foreign Affairs Advisor to the Prime Minister, and Matthew Hooten, commentator and founder of Excelsium. For all Beryl did, thank you seems such an inadequate word, but I say it from the bottom of my heart. She was wise, witty, loyal, and tough. Even my wife Alexandra quickly realized she first had to win over Beryl. <laughs> But then, Beryl was remarkably successful with marriages. Six in addition to mine, I think, was the score amongst our staff. And so, Alexandra, I likewise say thank you for sharing, with, for sharing me with this place. Alexandra gave so, up so much of her own professional career that we might be together again. As a professional counsellor, she taught me to find the good in all people. She made me a better person which in turn enabled me to be a better speaker. In recent years, I've felt so guilty. She gave up her wonderful counselling job at King's College to be with me, and yet has only had me part-time. From now on, it's full-time, I promise. <laughs> my colleagues, I've said nothing about my time as speaker. You've had to endure those four years and will make your own judgments. I just want to thank you for the tremendous courtesy and goodwill you've shown me. It's been a privilege to serve as your speaker. With your indulgence, Mr. Speaker, 
May I say to the Leader of the Opposition, David Shearer, you have my respect for the integrity you've brought to a fiendishly difficult job. And finally, Prime Minister, you bring such extraordinary skills to this place. I want it known that never once in my four years as Speaker did you ever try to influence the way I was chairing this House or any decision I ever made. Listening to other speakers around the Commonwealth, I'm not sure many are quite so fortunate. For that and so many other things, I thank you. My colleagues, we all come here with dreams to, as my father said, brighten and better the place. We don't always agree on how best to do it, but that makes for healthy debate. To you all, every success as you seek to make your dreams a reality. He koto kato, he rapone ki e fai kiko aua moe moea, te tu mana ko ia ka tutu ki ka angitu. Honourable Members, the House is suspended for the dinner break. I will resume the chair at 7.30pm.